Crystal Carson on the show today. Crystal Carson is an acting coach. Crystal, you were yeah. the one of the first acting coaches that came here to help us. Yeah. So to me, you are a gift. And to a oh. lot of people in Atlanta, you are a gift. So I just really want to hit on why actors need to train. That it's so funny, isn't it? Because it seems so obvious. Right. But again, if you watch television, trained actors make it look so easy. You go, I right. can do that. Yeah. You're just going to stand up there and say some words and look around where they tell you to look. <laughs> It's a little bit more than yeah, that. Yeah, and I always say that a trained actor looks like raw talent. Yeah, exactly. Let's hit on subtext. What is subtext okay. and um, why is that a very important word to an actor? Well, we're called actors. We're not called line sayers or talkers. So what is it about us that has action? Our body language has action. And Una Hagen always said that if you have a powerful thought, it's going to show up on your body. It's going to show up in a blink or in something that passes your eyes. People can see it. Uh -huh. So what we're supposed to be doing as actors is creating that action. Right. We walk around and we think and feel, which creates communication, body language. The writer is the person that handles the words. So we... You know, are part of a team. There's a customer and a makeup person and a writer and a director, and we have to work with everyone. But what do we bring as actors to the show? Right. We don't bring, I hold the costumes on my body. We do that. Right. We don't bring, I say the lines verbatim. We do that. Uh huh. We don't bring, blah, 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 blah. We work um, together with everyone to do those things. But they all have to work with everyone together as well, but they have a specific thing they do. Right. And I think a lot of actors, young actors, beginning actors, misunderstand that their one thing they do isn't memorize the words. Right. Again. That's the work. That's what the writer does right. is provide those words. You don't memorize his work. Right. You don't memorize your costume. You don't memorize. But you take the costume. You take the makeup, you take the words, you take the direction, and you go, why did my character, you know, what does it mean to me? How does it feel to walk in these clothes and these shoes? What does it mean to me to say these words? Yeah. Okay, so if I say, hey, Martha, to you, instead of, hi, Martha, or hello, Martha, it means something about our relationship. So rather than memorizing, hey, Martha, I want to note to myself what that means about our relationship. And then if I say, oh my gosh, I forgot the casserole. Okay, well, where am I that I need a casserole? Who told me to make the casserole? What are we going to do with the casserole? So I just kind of let my imagination start to create rather than going, hey, Martha, hey, hey, starts with H. Hey, Martha, 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 rhymes with nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> went down the wrong road there. You know, uh, uh, I forgot the casserole. Oh, let me remember that. You can watch an actor remember. Right. But that doesn't look like raw acting. That doesn't right. look like life. That looks right. like someone remembering. Right, right. And really, uh, the beauty to me of, of subtext is once you start listening to people in subtext, you have a whole different way to communicate. That's, That's what I love. very true. It's kind of like the, through Meisner, you yes. know, where you can say the same words back and forth in the repetition exercise. Right. But it means a completely different thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get so ex excited about that. Um, so in acting, it's really hard to tell an actor, don't, don't worry about the lines. Right? It is. That doesn't make sense to, right. a, to, to a beginning actor because they're like, what? Right. It, uh, that's what I... Well, you don't get any support. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Your, the whole, your agent's going to say, memorize your lines. And uh -huh. the casting director's going to say, be off book. And, you know, all your friend actors are going to be memorizing their lines. And the thing is, is that comes from a very legitimate source. Right. That comes back before Stanislavski. That comes back when we did theater. Right. And you had months to memorize your lines with nothing on them, just by rote, don't have any point of view. Which, by the way, I was really happy the day that I took a psychology class and discovered you can't do that. Human beings cannot memorize a phrase of words without creating a point of view about them. Yeah. That's not a human thing. So, Because I could never do that. I right. always try to make it sound like I'd memorized it flat. But I did have an, an idea about it, otherwise I couldn't remember it. And that's actually the way the human mind works. So I gave... 
I stopped beating myself up over that one. So <laughs> stop beating yourself up over that one. If you're trying to memorize flat and with nothing on it, you can't. Right. You won't. You either won't memorize it. Or, or so, so what are some tips for actors for for memorization? Okay, okay. Well, from Crystal Carson, I hate tips and tricks because to <laughs> me it's a it's a bigger thing than that. It's like you know asking a doctor like what are the tips to brain surgery? Right. But <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but but the I guess the thing to do is after you've looked at the piece and you've read it, try to read it like a novel. Mm -hmm. Try to disconnect from it, relax, breathe. If you're into meditation, that is something so important for mm -hmm. an actor because meditation is about training your mind to go where you want it. Acting is about training your mind to go where you want it. Yeah. So it's building that muscle. Relax and, and read it and know that the words, it's like reading a novel where all you read was the words that that wouldn't be a very good, mm -hmm. well, be Kirk Bonovich. You have to imagine it and you have to visualize it. And the thing that... We uh, are the narration. Yes. We are the environment and everything that they write in that book. But when it says, you know, the man walked in and he saw the woman sitting there, he, it reminded him of his mother when she was young. Nobody knows that from you saying, hi, Martha. Right. But you have to invent that for yourself. If they wrote all of that for you, I know actors would then do it. But if they wrote all of that, that's called a novel, not a screenplay. Right. We need to discover what's going on in the scene. So I was going to say, read it like a novel and then ask yourself, what does my character want? Right. And what does the other character want that makes that an obstacle to what I want? Right. And then personalize those things, figure out the relationship, and then cover up what you say. Just cover up what you say. And you might walk in and say, hi, Martha, and then look. Oh, it's hey. Now, the beautiful thing is don't go... I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's hi, Mar or it's hey, Martha. Don't do that because you miss then the generating of the idea. Right. We want your mind to fix the line in the place where you generate it, not in the product. So you're killing yourself if you memorize it first. You're taking away a fantastic tool. Um, anyway, if, I have so much to say. I know, I know. I'm skipping. But if, if you say... Hi, Martha, and then look and see that you say, hey, your mind will go, hey, why did I say hey and not hi? I said hi, I generated hi, why hey? Those things are the subtext now. It will solve that problem. Your mind abhors a vacuum. It will fix that for you. Mm -hmm. And the next time you come along, you don't have to go, oh, it's hi, you know, it's hey, it's hey, it's hey, it's not hi, it's hey. You don't have to do that. Right. You just generate again from inside of the reasons right. that you gave yourself that you say, hey, right. well, maybe I'm kind of, you know, cooler yeah. with it. And your mind picks up so much more. If, you, if you're in the visualization of yes. your mind picks up so much more than you ever even realize Your mind is amazing. Yes. Yeah. 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 And we don't give ourselves any credit. One more thing. Okay. Um, video auditions. Okay. Um, what is it that you think actors miss so much on video auditions? What trips them? I think they believe that they need to stand very still. Yes. And th so that takes away a lot of nonverbal communication. Uh -huh. And if we're actors and our job is nonverbal communication, action, yeah. uh, you've just hurt yourself. Yeah. You did uh, one of the workshops that I was at um, that, that you did. You did this beautiful demonstration. I will never forget it. That was the day that I was like, oh my God, that woman. <laughs> um, but you were talking about how you had an audition and it was at a lake or something, an ocean or, um, oh, and I, you were trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to, it didn't really have any words. You just had to come up through the water. And it was a horror film and the, and the person was being shot at. So they dove off of this boat into the water and then they come up inside a little cave. And you used a chair and yeah. went up underneath the chair and came up and I was floored. Well, if they're going to give you that, put the start up here and have you do all that. And then the line and then the, the character comes up and discovers that the girl behind her didn't come up. So she dives back down and has to go get her and pull her up. And, and so it we worked. found the resistance. Yeah, and it feels good. Yeah. You feel so stupid going. And that's something. And that's <laughs> no something. Resistance. That's something that you teach is resistance. Yes. That um, then we don't need to pantomime. No. It has to have never resistance. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and people. So so don't mime. And yet you can move and you can do all these things. And it is interesting to see the side of your face sometimes. Right. You know we 
turn on TV, we see the sides of people's faces. Right. Uh, Feel look free to act. Life, we see the sides of people's faces. They exist. Right. And it communicates something. Yeah. If I continue to talk to you for a moment, it communicates something. Right. And we take that away. And I watch so many actors, this is another kind of funny one, do scenes where they're put in a car well, without asking themselves, why did the writer put this in a car? Which there's wonderful answers to that usually. Uh-huh. But then they talk straight this way, sort of into the camera, you know. And when you watch that played back, well, the actor has to feel it too. It's like you tied grandma to the hood. <laughs> yes, you know? yes, It feels yes, really yeah. odd. But if you could just turn your chair slightly and talk to the camera... Then you're going to feel like you're in the car. You're going to find, I'm going to knock things down. You're going to find those places where you look out the window and where you're wondering if we're almost there and if you pass somebody and hey, hey, hey. Crystal, this is for you some dark chocolate to remind Ooh. you that you're a gift in life. Thank you. You Do welcome. I get to keep the jar too? Or? You get to keep the jar I too. I do? Yes, yes. And yours have... says, what does it say? Hip, hip, sip, sip, sip hooray. Sip, sip, hooray. Sip, sip, hooray. <laughs> Oh, I should have told you I like alcohol. We <laughs> no, you well, know. Yeah, that, that's for the sip, sip later. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for being a, being a gift. This is serious. Listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you so I'm much for. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? Thank you so much for being a gift to Atlanta. You are a gift. Thank you. You are, and I will tell you guys. Uh, Crystal comes into town about four times a year. And she does these great workshops that you get tons of information from and things that you probably would not even think about, like resistance. And she teaches you how to um, use your your sides as, because mm. um, we don't get to use props, but we can right. use our sides. And you right. teach all kinds of wonderful um, little tricks to, <gasps> tricks. I, I'm telling you, I was fascinated by that. <laughs> <laughs> and I've passed some of those things on. Good. So, and I always give you credit for it. I always say this came from Crystal oh, Carson. I appreciate that. You're welcome. However um, you do it, do it. You yeah. know, I really want to see all of the actors across the world do better at acting because I really feel like we make a difference. I know that actors get letters from people who feel isolated, who feel alone, and who say, you know, I had this problem X Y Z with my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my wife. But when I saw this character deal with it, I didn't feel alone anymore. And I know the character's not real, but some writer wrote that. Right. And some director directed it and some actor got it. Right. And some producer thought it was important enough that there's enough of me out there that care about this topic enough to put it on the air. And that made a difference. Like yeah. I put the pills down, I put the gun down, I put the razor down. Yeah, you and don't, a what, Hallmark what? commercial, you know, excuse me, I'm getting choked up, can make a difference like that. Yeah. We have such powerful jobs. And I just, I want to empower actors to be able to make a difference in the world like that. You have a voice and you have more than you think and you can provide more for your communities than you could ever know. If, yeah. as long, if, you, if you put forth the effort. That's why I so, was excited to be on your show, and you are a gift. This show aw, is a gift. Thank you, thank you. I, I'm loving doing this. Um, if you have some advice to give to a, a – let's go with a new actor because okay. I think they struggle the most, and that first two-year period is, is a tough one. Um, what advice would you give? Well, train. And I, I don't mean to be self-serving, but definitely train. Well, it's your first step. You wouldn't try to be a dancer with no training. You wouldn't try to be a musician with no training. So, of course, you're an artist. Train. There is so much that is natural to it as well. You need to be your biggest advocate. Know what you're about as an actor. Have a vision. Um, know that you want to be real and connected and authentic and be very careful about who you train with. Yes. If it's someone who is emphasizing memorize your lines from that point of view, because your lines do get memorized and they are verbatim, but not because you ever stopped and did that with your left brain. It's because you did the imagination work with your right brain that they just um, accidentally got memorized. So be careful who you train with. And, and, the, and the other, can I add to that? Yeah. If you are uncomfortable, if somebody as a coach is making yeah, you uncomfortable or belittling you, right. or, I mean, a coach is a coach. They are supposed to, you know, they dig into places that are uncomfortable. But when you when it comes to a point of belittling or making you feel less than, 
that's probably not good for your psyche and for your emotional well-being. No, exactly. That's so important. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, there's so much more that goes with that too, but you know who you click with. Find a coach you click with. That's the most important yeah. thing. Find an agent that you click with. Find a manager that you click with. Yeah, and somebody you're, that believes in you. Yeah, you're going to spend more time with your acting coach and your manager and your agent than you are on set. Right. So have a happy life. Be around people you adore. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And um, we hope this segment inspired and educated you.